Hello everyone, thank you so much for joining. Today is going to be day, day three for our class. And this is going to be Microsoft Office 365 administration course. And today what are we gonna do is we are gonna go ahead and continue learning about um, users administration. And in there, uh, we will basically learn what can we do uh, when it comes to administrating user accounts in Office 365. So basically a lot of time when you are going to start working as um, cloud administrator or system administrator or Office 365 administrator, you will be assigned to do a lot of users um, administration. In that case, we will learn how can we do that. So in our previous class, we learned how we can basically create multiple users and then assign them different rights. Uh, some of them were administrators, some of them were basic users. But today we will see how can we learn um, the administration of it. So I am in the office.com and I am logged in with my account. And in here, um, I just clicked on admin because anytime you want to do administration, you need to click on admin icon. That is where you click. If you don't see it, that means that your account um, does not have the admin permission. So when you click on that, um, this is basically asking us to enable uh, two-factor authentication, but we are not going to do that for now. We will click on skip for 40 day, 14 days and then click on no because I don't want to remember the password. Once you are there, you can again see that in here we do have our um, admin portal this is the office 365 admin center and this is where we do all user management group management every management that relates to office 365 you will basically be able to do that from here because this is the central point for all the services that you can administer all right so in our case, we will click on users and then click on active users. So um, once I click on active users, all right, so let's just say that you are working as a um, cloud administrator, Office 365 administrator, and you have a user called Said Kawa, and you basically want to do what? Uh, reset the password for Said Kawa because Said Kawa called you and said, hey, you know what? I don't remember my password anymore. Can you please reset that for me? So in that case, what you can do is when you search or look for Said Kawa's account, you can see that I have this key icon over here. That is a shortcut. You simply click on it and then it will allow you to do what? It will allow you to reset the um, password. But if you also click here, uh, let me move myself. Um, if you click there, you can see that in here we have we have what? We have reset password option. So click on reset password and in here you can see that it is telling us automatically create a password. So if you do not want to choose a password or create a password, what you can do is you can leave that option open. Uh, enabled and then required this user to change their password when they first log in. This is a really good thing to have. It is a good practice to always make sure it's enabled because if you don't do that, the user will not reset the password and they will think that you know their password and something happens in future they will blame you. They will say, hey, you know my password and you did this so enable it so they reset it and now they are responsible if you want all the details to be emailed to you you can check this option in our case we do not want to do that we click on reset password and you can see that it has now changed the password this is going to be the new password all right so 
I'm going to change this password because I am recording um, so that um, someone will not try to log in. All right, so we'll, we'll change this. Um, so this is how you can do that. Now you can send this detail, uh, all these details to uh, the user and the user will basically go to office.com or portal.office.com as we log in here, they will also log in and they will be able to do what? They will be able to uh, use it. If you don't know how to log in, you can use the um, video for day one and day two where you will learn how to log in as a normal or a standard user. All right, so once you're done, click on close. Now we have changed the password. Another thing that we can do here is called block sign in. A lot of times your employees will no longer, maybe they will no longer work for the company, they no longer work for the company, or, or you do not want that user to be able to log in. So what you can do is you click, can click on block sign in and this block sign in will not allow the user to log in anymore. And then you say block this user from signing in. All right, so once you do that, this user is no longer gonna be able to sign in anymore. So save changes. Now, when Saikawa tries to uh, log in, what will happen? He will not be able to. You can see sign in blocked. If you want to unblock it, click on unblock and then uncheck the block and then click on save changes. All right, so it will take like up to 15 minutes um, for the changes to take effect. Another option that we have here is delete user. If you no longer need that user, if that user is no longer needed, it's no longer there, you can always delete it. But it's not a good practice to delete um, active users or employees who have worked for you for a lot of time. So you need to have a retention period like, uh, we should delete users after six months, right? When they leave the company, we should delete it after six months. Um, every company will have their own policy, but it's not a good practice to delete it right away when the uh, users basically leaves. So remember this, this is very important. All right. Another basic information that you can manage here is basically uh, when was the user last signed in? You can see that right now I don't see anything because the user didn't sign in. But if I go here, you can see that uh, the user was signed in on December 1. If I click on here, it is showing me all sign in activity and telling me failure or success. So a lot of time you want to know when the user signed in last time. So what you can do is you can check this sign in activity and that will give you all the details. Another thing that let me go back to the normal user and then in here you can see that I have other options like who is my manager? You can edit it from here. So who is your manager? you can edit it like whoever is your supervisor you can add it there you can add or manage contact information in here you can see that i can add mobile number street number city and everything so that we have more and more information about the employee about the user so that is one important thing there it is always good to put as much as in full like phone number department who they are, who is the boss for them, who is their manager. It is really good. It is really uh, informative when you basically put it. That helps a lot to manage users in like in future. All right, so you can also click on change and choose photo and then change your photo like I have here. So that's how you can basically do that. That's how you can work with different um, settings for the user account that's one thing there um, another thing that you can do is once you select it you have manage product license let's just say that we received a call and um, the manager said you know what go ahead and remove all the licenses 
that is assigned to Kawa. So when you select it and you can click on turn off and you can say yes. What will happen now? Kawa will not have any licenses assigned. So you can see, um, sorry, cancel. So if I refresh, if I go back now, you can see that click on licenses and app, you can see all of them are off, right? Kawa will no longer be able to access emails, Teams, SharePoint, everything he will not be able to access. So in here, you can see that he still has a lot of them there. But if you want to disable all of it at once, simply click here and save changes. Now Kawa's account is not licensed. You can see it's unlicensed, meaning that Kawa can no longer use um, any of the Office 365 services such as on Exchange Online and other things. Um, so no licenses to use those services. Um, uh, he's like a guest user now. Not a guest user, but like a guest user. So those are the things that you can do there. All right, so another thing that we can do is, we can basically, uh, let me see, what else do we have? Um, another thing that you can do is, you can always basically manage contacts, right? So this was for active users. If you click on contacts, you can see that what is contact actually? Contact is basically something that you can add here and then um, your employees can find them in their Outlook, all right? Um, contacts are basically your customers, like external users, people who are outside from different organizations, right? So let's just say that you have a company, IT company, right? You have IT company and you have customers. You can add all of your customers' uh, contacts here. And then whenever you go to your Outlook where you send email, you will be able to, um, you will be able to find those contacts. Like you have contacts in your phone, right? On your phone, on your mobile phone, you have contacts you can find it you can call same thing you can do here you can click on add contact and you can basically uh do what you can say um for example enam all right uh alimi so and um uh in here, Inam Alimi, and then you can put his email address. Um, so his email address will be a alimi at um, email.com, whatever. All right, so page info. You can add his company name. Company name for Inam is office phone number, website, uh, and a lot of other things. You can add it all from here. And you can say add. Once you click on add, now Enam's contact information is basically added here. It will take up to 30 minutes so that it will show in the Outlook. So now all of your employees, when they go to their Outlook to send an email, when they click on contacts, they will be able to see it. All right, so you can also add multiple contacts. Um, because if you add from here one by one, it is going to take a lot of time. But in here, you can add multiple contacts. So if you click on add multiple contacts in here, you can see that you can download a CSV file and basically fill it up with all the information and then upload it. That's all you got to do. So once you do that, it will basically do what? It will add those details in there. So um, if I if I click on this one, download CSV file with headers and sample contact info. So let's, let's take a look at it. All right, so this is the sample that I downloaded. So in here, you can see that I have Chris Green, first name, last name. So... So what I can do is like you can see you can you can start adding more and more right you can start adding more and more in here but this is going to be 
this is gonna be just um, this is gonna be just one account but what you can do is you can uh, start adding more so I'm, I'm just doing this for sample so this is contact name and um, this is um, basically uh, first name uh, just I'm, I'm just doing a test or example here okay so just ignore me um, doing all these things here um, so that's that's all I want to use that's all I'll, I want to use um, let's let's see if this is gonna work so here I'll click on browse um, so once I click on browse I click on import contacts uh, one or more display name or email cells are empty okay we have to fix it uh, all right so let me let me try to fix that let me try to uh, fix it so I'm gonna um, yeah you can you can do that you can um, basically put everything and then add them all there sorry my excel uh, skills are not so good so so we have the display name let's see if we have the display name okay so i'm gonna save this and i'm gonna try again oops okay browse sample contact okay now this time we don't have any errors add contacts all right I hope that is going to work. Okay, it's taking a little bit of time, which is okay. All right, so you can see 16 contacts couldn't be added. It's a good error. You see, it's good. We learned something here. So you can see that um, they were same because I, if you remember, I was just typing and typing, right? So um, they, they, they were the same names. That's why it did not work. But you can see it worked, right? So it's working. It's there. So that's how you can do that. If you want to export or save all these contacts into a Excel file, you can do that too. You can click on ex export and then click on continue. Now when you open, you can see that all of them is there. There you go. See, you were able to save it into Excel. All right, so that's how you can basically work with contacts.